This is the stock pipe from the grenade launcher, the cannonball from the loose cannon, and the ball thing from the iron bomber. Which of these would you say is the biggest? Oh, you thought the cannonball is the biggest? No, of course not. It's actually the iron bomber that has the biggest hitbox. The cannonball and the stock pipes both have this hitbox. And instead, the smallest looking one has the biggest hitbox by about double the size, or about 8 times the volume of the default pipes. So, what went wrong? When the demo man fires any projectile, three things happen. First, the game calculates what it should do with the projectile. From where you were aiming, it launches the projectile forward with a base upward velocity of 200. It randomly adds and subtracts up to 10 units of vertical and horizontal deviation, and random angular velocity that could add or subtract up to 1200 to the projectile's spin, making it spin forwards or backwards through the air. With a faster firing rate, we can see the vertical randomness when pipes explode a bit lower or higher than average, and the horizontal randomness in the way they spread out. Slowing down the footage, we can also see how pipes coming out of the barrel will randomly spin forwards or backwards. Next, the projectile type. The game checks to see if you're using the default stickies, the sticky jumper, the loose cannon, or the default grenade launcher, in which case it applies the relevant properties such as the loose cannon's double donk ability, the sticky jumper that only deals knockback, and applies the appropriate projectile model. After all this, the projectile's collision hitbox is overridden to 4x4x4. Suspiciously missing from that list is the iron bomber. Instead of changing models while the game checks for the projectile's type like the four mentioned, it instead changes model at the end of the projectile spawning process through an item attribute. An item attribute is basically what's written underneath your weapon, such as no random crits or 20% more damage. So the Iron Bomber has a hidden item attribute that says change the projectile model to the ball looking one. The model then gets changed as it should. But the problem is that the set model function used to change the projectile from a pipe to the ball also goes ahead and recalculates the projectile's collision hitbox afterwards. In most situations that you're using this function, it makes sense to recalculate. The model being swapped in could be dramatically different to the original one, causing a massive collision hitbox mismatch. So it makes sense to fix it. But sometimes, it can accidentally cause issues like this to happen. But the entire issue is as simple as that. This could be fixed by adding it as part of a projectile type it checks for here, or simply moving the second model change before the override, or even just override it again after the second model change. Besides the Iron Bomber, there are also actually two other weapons that use an item attribute to change projectile models, but it doesn't end up having any meaningful impact. The override to make the collision hitbox smaller also applies to stickies, which looks like this. The Quickie Bomb Launcher, who also changes its projectile's model using the same item attribute as the Iron Bomber, also has its collision hitbox recalculated to this bigger one. The Scottish Resistance is a bit different, in that it has an item attribute for its detonation mode that the game checks for. If detonation mode is 1, the Sticky's model gets updated, which then, again, makes the collision hitbox recalculate. But stickies handle all of their collisions by directly comparing against the victim's model. So for stickies, there are literally zero consequences to this error. And a important note regarding physics, the Iron Bomber's ball is entirely cosmetic. Even though the Iron Bomber has a physics model, because the model is changed through the item attribute, it never gets loaded, so the game continues to use the stock pipes physics model. If I replace the stock pipes with a minigun, then switch to the iron bomber. 
we can definitively conclude that it is indeed still simulating physics as if it was a stock pipe. Here is what happens if the iron bomber's ball is replaced with a train, which rolls on the floor like a stock pipe, and makes pipes really easy to hit too. And for perfect certainty, with all projectile randomness removed, the stock pipes and the iron bomber both land on identical coordinates. Since this physics issue only affects weapons that change their projectile through a item attribute, this does mean that the cannonball and sticky jumper are simulated accurately. First, the minigun pipes don't cause the loose cannon to freak out. Second, with no randomness, a loose cannon with no attributes will land about 120 units short of the stock pipe. As for the sticky jumper and any of the tests regarding the other sticky bombs, there's randomness from the physics simulation that I can get rid of that causes it to fall in a slightly different place each time. But every sticky has practically the same physics model, so there are no significant differences between sticky variants. I also checked how a properly simulated iron bomber ball would do. It sucks. And if you're curious about testing the other demo projectiles, there's a video linked in the comments and description that runs every test I can think of. But in conclusion, any kill you get as the demo man is entirely luck, and it objectively, definitively takes no skill. Might as well just go to the casino. If you miss any pipes or stickies, blame your weapon for having a bad seed. It's not your fault. It's something that's absolutely occurring, but nobody can really understand like, well, you know, should we make them bigger? Should we make them smaller? Or is it like tinier and tinier? 